Hello guys, my name is Erx, and today we're going to be talking some more history, as I'm sure you expected from the last uh, episode. Um, well, I'm going to be continuing this World War II special on the atomic bombing of Japan. On a kind of related note, it's kind of weird, coincidental, that we'd be talking about the atomic bombing of Japan uh, right around this time when they got hit with all that tsunami and earthquake business. Anyway, um, yeah, just a little thing to think about. Anyway, um, last time we were here, uh, we were talking about how it became accept acceptable for both Axis and Allies to bomb civilian targets, and so that was exemplified in the bombings of Dresden, Germany, and uh, Tokyo, Japan. And that wasn't talking about atomic bombs yet, that was really talking about the sort of regular incendiary bombs, as I, I do air quotes. I'm doing air quotes right now, you can't see it. So. What happened after all these incendiary bomb strikes? Well, see, the Japanese are very strict. Uh, they hold very true to their warrior code. And this warrior warrior code stipulates that, you know, they never surrender. So uh, at this point, for sure, they were definitely sticking to that and saying, you know, well, you know, whatever, it's just some bombings. We're not going to surrender because that's what we do or what we don't do, I guess you could say. Um, but by July 1945, so we're getting closer to the bomb the bombs, the, the atomic bombs, uh, we were launching more than 1,200 bombing assaults a week against Japan. So again, these are just the incendiary bombs, but that's still a shitload of bombs. Honestly, I'm pretty sure it killed more, but, uh, although, you know, that's multiple bombings. So I guess you could say that's just logical, that it would kill more than just one bombing, uh, the, the two atomic bombs. But if you think about it, considering how much of a bad rap the atomic bombs get, mm, I don't know. Uh, well, we can talk about that later. How I said, uh, you know, we were going to have a discussion after. Or I guess I was going to have a discussion with myself. <laughs> um, okay, so still, you know, even after 1,200 bombing runs a week, no indication of surrender. Very uh, strict to that code, that warrior code. Um, on July 16th, 1945, so we're still in July 1945, uh, the Manhattan Project, as you guys might know, that's uh, the project for coming up with the atomic bombs. Pretty sure Oppenheimer was running it. Actually, I don't have that in front of me, so don't quote me on that, but I remember that name. Um, that's when they came up with what uh, President Truman, at the time it was Truman, it wasn't FDR anymore, because I'm, I'm pretty sure he died. Um, anyway, uh, it said that this was the most terrible thing uh, ever discovered but that it had the potential to become uh, the best thing and because it could just be so wildly successful because it's so terribly powerful. Uh, really, uh, this was his justification for using it and for calling it you know, such a, a potentially successful tool is that it could end the war decisively and, and I guess thereby save a lot of lives. Uh, both American and uh, when you look back, I don't know if they were thinking about this at the time, but it, it ultimately saved more Japanese lives too. Because if you think about it, if we're really entrenched in this warfare, um, there are going to be a lot of deaths on both sides. That's going to turn into really like a brawl, like slug for slug kind of... I just watched the fighter today, <laughs> so excuse any uh, boxing analogies. But um, yeah, so basically what I said, like a brawl, slug for slug. Um, you know, obviously we have a lot more because uh, America... <laughs> As a lot of people, a big army, obviously. Um, so maybe we could take a battle of attrition like that longer and maybe pull out a victory in the end. But either way, there's going to be a, a lot of deaths on both sides, and that's not going to be for anyone, um, even if you have to use this atomic bomb. So that really was the plan. It's not like we were just going in there and saying, like, well, we've got this big bomb, let's just use it. Um, no, it really it had a strategic advantage, a very legitimate strategic advantage. So on July 27th, the United States issued an ultimatum, and an ultimatum is just, you know, we say, uh, like, do this or something bad is going to happen. That's exactly what we said. We said, surrender or we will unleash a super weapon. I'm air quoting again. And that super weapon was the atomic bomb, obviously, or the atomic bombs. And I'm not sure on something, actually. And that's, um, I'm not sure if they said the super weapon because... Uh, the Japanese just wouldn't know what an atomic bomb is, and maybe they wouldn't be threatened by it. Or if, um, you know, it was just, like, more ominous to say super weapon. But I could see a super weapon, I'm air quoting again, could be, like, misconstrued or something, and just taken as a bluff, maybe? So maybe that's sort of what they were thinking, but I'm sure it's more likely that they were just sticking to their warrior code as, 
you know, as was evidenced uh, earlier several times. So um, Japan refused, naturally. And so on August 6th, 1945, so we were in July, now it's August 6th. It's a very important date, you should remember it. A B-29, Super Fortress, as we talked about many times, and I gave you three pictures. <laughs> um, this B-29 Super Fortress named the Enola Gay, uh, piloted by Lieutenant Colonel Paul Tibbetts, uh, lifted off from the uh, the Tinian Island, as I was talking about earlier. So this was uh, one of the Mariana Islands, and it was island the island Tinian. Uh, on board of that B-29 Super Fortress were 8,000 pounds of... Uh, of bomb <laughs> that's a lot of bomb containing the destructive power of 12.5 kilotons of tnt that's a lot <laughs> i mean i i honestly i can't really explain it any better than uh you know maybe you should just watch some footage of the bombing of hiroshima um anyway so uh tippets started heading towards hiroshima and I think it was selected because uh, there were some military bases and industrial areas, so that's, uh, that's a pretty prime way to cripple Japan. And obviously, you know, we're in war, so that's what we want to do. So, at 8.15 in the morning, 8.15 a.m., the Nolgay dropped this, and this first bomb uh, was a smaller of the, uh, the, the smaller of the two atomic bombs. This was named the Little Boy. Um, a short time later, Tippett's reported that a bright light just illuminated the inside of the plane, and obviously that was from the bomb, dropping the bomb. And I'm out of time, so I'm gonna have to wrap this up next time. I'll give you some more results, and the other bomb, and then the end of the war and all that, and a little discussion. So, hope you guys like this, I'll see you next time, bye.